for using IELTS listening test. There is a good news for you guys. Now you can practice unlimited speaking tests on our application Baby Code. I know, I know. Some people will say कि मैं तो अपने friends के साथ practice कर लेता हूँ. मैं अपने institute में रोज test देता हूँ. या मैं mirror के सामने practice करता हूँ. लेकिन रोज एक या दो test देना is not enough to clear IELTS. और आपके friends और mirror आपको valuable feedback कभी नहीं दे सकते. लेकिन अगर आप Baby Code application use करते हो, तो आप कहीं भी और कभी भी unlimited test दे सकते हो. Baby code pe practice karna is like having a personal teacher. App will take exam like a real examiner. After test, you can check your grammar, fluency or pronunciation mistakes. Even you can check your band score. This app will provide you free test every day. So do not forget to try link in the description. But if you need more test access, it will just cost you $3.99. Wait, if you use my promo code IELTS50, that will give you even more 50 rupees discount. Now it's like a one time meal money, but this will help you to crack your IELTS exam. Now look at part one. Part one. You are going to hear a conversation about purchasing a cellular phone. First, you have some time to look at questions one to six. Now listen to the tape and answer questions 1 to 6. Excuse me, can you give me some information about purchasing a cellular phone? Of course, my pleasure. We carry all sorts of phones from the most basic phones to very sophisticated web-enabled phones. I will do my best to help you find a phone that suits your needs. Thanks. I'm looking for two cellular phones, one for me and one for my son. I think I won't need anything too sophisticated. Just your basic phone functions. But maybe my son will like something with more functions. Sure, well, let's take a look. So you have no preferences at all. What about the size or colour? How about the brand? Well, I don't really care what brand the cell phone is. But I guess I don't want anything that's too big or too small. I want a phone that can fit nicely in my hand and in my pocket. If it's too big, it might be too heavy. And if it's too small, I might lose it. Colour, I don't really care about either. Well, I don't want a pink phone. Ah, OK. So let's look for something suitable for a working person. How about this one? This one is the R55. It is black, not too big, not too small, all the usual functions. The best feature of the R55 is that it can be used worldwide, even in Europe or Asia. It looks good. How much does it cost? It is only $100. If you sign up for a calling plan, then we will give you a $50 discount on the phone. How old is this model, though? I don't want anything that's too old. This model was introduced into the market about three years ago, so it is a bit older, but be assured it will still work fine. Well, I think I still want something not as old. How about from last year? Any good phones from around that time? Yes, there are some. How about this one? It's the new model of the phone you just looked at, called the W55. Most of the features are the same. There are some new features on the W55, though. The battery will last up to two days longer, and the overall weight of the phone is lighter. How much is this one? This is selling for $150. If you purchase it along with a phone plan, then it will be only $100. OK, I think I'll take this one. Now, I need to pick up a phone for my son. I think he'll want something more trendy, so how about a new model for him? Nothing too extravagant or expensive, though. This right here is the newest offering from the leading company in the cellular phone business. The phone is called the Rocket. It is well suited for teenage users. Among the teen-friendly features are 10 songs to choose from, a free messaging system that allows friends to send texts to each other, and voice recognition dialing. The thing most younger users like about the Rocket is that it has a screen that changes colours. All this for only $100 with a purchase of a one-year phone plan. Sounds like something my son will like. Can I sign us both up at once? Yes, of course. Both of you can share one plan. You will pay only $50 a month for both of you to share a plan. That's it? Only $50 a month? Yes, that's all. Now look at questions 7 to 10.
Now listen to the tape and answer questions 7 to 10. OK, I will need your information. Name and address, please. Richard Derek Jones. What's your profession? I'm an engineer. Address, please. 322 First Street, San Francisco, California. And phone number, please. 621-360-7601. Oh, sorry, that's the wrong number. 621-360-7610. How many phones do you want activated onto your plan? Two for now. Thank you very much. Your phones will be ready in a minute. That is the end of part one. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turns to part two. Part two. You will hear a tour guide welcoming a group of visitors to the British Library and telling them about the library and what they will see there. First, you have some time to look at questions 11 to 15. Now listen carefully and answer questions 11 to 15. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to your very own tour of the British Library on this lovely afternoon. My name is Tony Walters, and I'm your guide for today. Could I please see your tickets for the guided tour? I'd also like to remind you that any tickets bought today do not include a visit to the reading rooms. I'm afraid we don't do visits on Fridays, or any weekday during working hours, so as not to disturb the readers. But if you do want to see those rooms, the only day there are tours is on Sundays. So, I don't want anyone to be disappointed about that today. OK? Thank you. Right, we'll start with a brief introduction. As many of you know, this is the United Kingdom's National Library. And you can see that this is a magnificent modern building. It was first designed by Sir Colin St. John Wilson in 1977 and inaugurated by Her Majesty the Queen more than 20 years later in 1998. As you can see, the size is immense and the basements alone have 300 kilometres of shelving and that's enough to hold about 12 million books. The total floor space here is 100,000 square metres, and, as I'll show you, the library houses a huge range of facilities and exhibition spaces, and it has a 1,000 staff members based here in the building. So, you can appreciate the scale of our operation. In fact, this was the biggest publicly funded building constructed in the United Kingdom last century. It is still funded by the government as a national institution, of course, and it houses one of the most important collections in the world. The different items come from every continent and span almost 3,000 years. The library isn't a public library, though. You can't just come in and join and borrow any of the books. Access to the collections is limited to those involved in carrying out research. So it's really a huge reference library for that purpose. And anyone who wants to consult any materials that are kept here can formally apply to use the library reading rooms. You now have some time to look at questions 16 to 20.
Now listen and answer questions 16 to 20. Right. Well, here we are, standing at the meeting point on the lower ground floor, just to the right of the main entrance. I've given you all a plan of the building so that we can orientate ourselves and get an idea of where we'll be going. Now, outside the main entrance, you'll see the wide piazza with the stunning sculpture of Newton. The sculptor was Paolozzi, but it's based on the famous image by William Blake, and it's definitely worth a closer look. On the other side of the piazza from the statue is the conference centre, which is used for all kinds of international conventions. We'll take a quick look inside at the end of our tour. Looking ahead of us now, you'll see that we're standing opposite the staircase down to the basement, where you'll find the cloakroom. And to the left of that, we have the information desk, where you can find out about any current exhibitions, uh, the times of the tours and anything you need to know if you don't have a tour guide. As you can see, on this lower ground floor, we also have a bookshop. That's the area over to the left of the main entrance. You'll be free to browse there when we get back to the ground floor. Now, opposite the main entrance on this floor, we have the open stairs leading up to the upper ground floor. And at the top of them, in the middle of the upper ground floor, you can see a kind of glass-sided tower that rises all the way up through the ceiling and up to the first floor. This is called the King's Library. It's really the heart of the building. It was built to house the collection that was presented to the nation in 1823 by the King. You can see it from every floor above ground. When we go up there, you'll find the library's treasures gallery on the left. Uh, can you find it on your plan? That's the exciting one, so we'll be visiting that first, but we'll also take a look at the stamp display situated behind it on the way to the cafe. Uh, a lot of people miss that. The cafeteria runs along the back of the floor, and in the right-hand corner you'll find the lifts and toilets. <laughs> Always good to locate them. The other main area on that floor is the public access catalogue section, and I'll show you how that operates when we get up there. That is the end of part two. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turns to part three. Part three. You will hear two conversations. Are based on the following conversation. The answer should be appropriate to the content of this conversation. First, you have some time to look at questions 21 to 25. Now listen carefully and answer questions 21 to 25. Oh, hi Dave. Long time no see. Hi Maria. I just settled down. I thought I'd drop by. Come on in, take a seat. Would you like anything to drink? I have Sprite and orange juice. Sprite would be fine. Oh, so how have you been? Oh, not bad. And you? Oh... I'm doing OK, but school has been really busy these days, and I haven't had time to relax. By the way, what's your major? Hotel management. Well, what do you want to do once you graduate? Um, 
I haven't decided for sure, but I think I'd like to work for a hotel or travel agency in this area. How about you? Well, when I first started college, I wanted to major in French, but I realised I might have a hard time finding a job using the language, so I changed my major to computer science. With the right skills, landing a job in the computer industry shouldn't be too difficult. So, do you have a part-time job to support yourself through school? Well, fortunately for me, I received a four-year academic scholarship that pays for all of my tuition and books. Wow, that's great! Yeah, how about you? Are you working your way through school? Yeah, I work three times a week at a restaurant near campus. Oh, what do you do there? I'm a cook. How do you like your job? It's okay. The other workers are friendly, and the pay isn't bad. Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions twenty-six to thirty. Now listen and answer questions twenty-six to thirty. Several days later, Dave and Maria met on campus. So, what do you want to do tomorrow? Well, let's look at this city guide here. Um, here's something interesting. Why don't we first visit the art museum in the morning? Okay, I like that idea. And、um, where do you want to have lunch? How about going to an Indian restaurant? The guide recommends one downtown, a few blocks from the museum. Now that sounds great. After that, what do you think about visiting the zoo? Well, it says here that there are some very unique animals not found anywhere else. Well, to tell the truth, I'm not really interested in going there. Yeah, why don't we go shopping instead? There are supposed to be some really nice places to pick up souvenirs. No, I don't think that's a good idea. We only have a few travelers' checks left, and I only have fifty dollars left in cash. No problem. We can use your credit card to pay for my clothes. Oh no! I remember the last time you used my credit card for your purchases. Oh well. Let's take the subway down to the seashore and walk along the beach. Now that sounds like a wonderful plan. That is the end of part three. You now have half a minute. To check your answers. Now it turns to part four. Part four. Hear a lecture on the research on teen brain. Now you have half a minute to read the questions thirty-one to forty. Now listen to the lecture and answer questions thirty-one to forty. Today our guest is Joseph Parks, medical director for the Botany Department of Mental Health. He's going to give a lecture about the research on teenage brain. Good morning, everyone. Today I'm going to introduce the new research about adolescent mind, the teenage brain. How much do you know about that? Do you believe in brain scanning? Do you think we can judge whether a teen is normal or mentally ill, or it's just another immature test? The new research shows a teen brain is in the middle of disordered changes. 
Those changes, scientists now believe, are so significant that they may reveal the mysteries of mental illness, explaining why some teens commit suicide, why others harm their classmates, and why some emerge later in life with mental disorders. The research looks forward to a day when teens could be tested for suicidal depression as easily as they are for heart disease. But there are signs that society and parents in particular would reject such a tool. Many parents question the validity of a mental health diagnosis. They fear that their children will be falsely tagged with a mark that he or she is abnormal. At the center of the debate is the teen brain. Its confusing architecture and the difficult question of what's typical in a teen and what's not. Under the old thinking, the adolescent brain was fully formed, needing only to be filled with facts, figures, and experiences to become an adult mind. At the same time, many people rejected the idea that young people were even capable of developing mental illnesses. However, the new research shows a teenage brain is an organ in transition. It has an unstable and vulnerable composition. The evolving teenage brain clearly isn't adult-like until the early 20s. If teens act young and stupid, it may be because brain areas that govern rational thought are not mature yet. All that is fine when the brain develops normally. But if the teen brain fails to successfully reinvent itself as an adult brain, mental illness may happen. Researchers increasingly believe if that process stops for some reason, teens are likely to develop mental illness. Early warning signs might be disregarded, as adults may think them the typical teen behaviours. Perhaps the chief hope of the new research is that it could make a difference for teenagers suffering from mental disorder and major depression. These can lead to suicide, which for years has been the leading cause of death for teens. Until recently, scientists couldn't peer into living brains to look for changes associated with normal development or mental diseases. That is beginning to change as researchers develop ever more sensitive brain scanners. However, the composite pictures are somewhat misleading. A snapshot of an individual brain may fall somewhere between normal and mentally ill. For now, psychiatrists and psychologists must still rely on interviews and observations of children's behaviour to diagnose mental illness. That is the end of part four. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Thank you for using IELTS listening test. There is a good news for you guys. Now you can practice unlimited speaking tests on our application Baby Code. I know, I know. Some people will say कि मैं तो अपने friends के साथ practice कर लेता हूँ. मैं अपने institute में रोज test देता हूँ. या मैं Miller के सामने practice करता हूँ. लेकिन रोज एक या दो test देना is not enough to clear IELTS. और आपके friends और Miller आपको valuable feedback कभी नहीं दे सकते. लेकिन अगर आप Baby Code application use करते हो, तो आप कहीं भी और कभी भी unlimited test दे सकते हो. Baby code pe practice karna is like having a personal teacher. App will take exam like a real examiner. After test, you can check your grammar, fluency or pronunciation mistakes. Even you can check your band score. This app will provide you free test every day. So do not forget to try link in the description. But if you need more test access, it will just cost you $3.99. Wait, if you use my promo code IELTS50, that will give you even more 50 rupees discount. Now it's like a one time meal money, but this will help you to crack your IELTS exam. Chasing stars and holding you 
I can't see the end, but we'll see it through.